how are you? Hi. Good to see you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you oh too, gosh. I love your look. Thank you. Yes. It. It's so nice in here. Thank you. Oh my gosh, I love the colors. I love the NCV cribs. Yes. The project edition. <laughs> I, do you mind if I turn the camera on you? Of course. Okay, it's okay. okay of Thank course. you. Yeah. Oh my gosh, this is your place? Yeah, this is my little <sighs> studio apartment. I love it. It has Thank so much character. You. Thank you. Just like you. Oh, I appreciate it. Thank yes. You so. Were you traumatized walking to the building? Because it's no. It, it's terrible. It's honestly reminds me of Koreatown, where I'm from. Okay. Yeah. Oh my okay. gosh, it was actually nice. And there's like a little outdoor area and okay. stuff. I loved it. This yeah. is so exciting. I'm excited too. It's weird. <laughs> in a good way. Because it's like, you know, I've seen your videos and to actually have you in person and you're in front of me is it's kind of surreal to me this just feels right like this feels like i'm supposed to be here with you in this moment in life to meet you so yeah. we're in the projects right is the project yes. is it is it is that like an offensive word to use or not? No, I mean, it's the projects. I mean, it, I mean, some people may, feel, you know, but it's like, honey, are you in denial? It can be demonizing in a way. Like when I tell people like, oh, I live in the Lower East Side, people usually think like, oh, really? Like, oh, you got money? Like, and it's like, oh no, I live in the pro I live in the projects. And then it's just like, oh, and then just like, sometimes people's perception gets warped and like, they think like, oh, this bitch is dirty or, or, you know, she she's broke. She's super duper broke. And that might be true, like being broke. I wasn't born born into money. I grew up from a very poor family, you know, so I, I didn't, I don't come from much. So this is what I can afford at the moment. Do you mind if I do a little? Oh, please do. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> I love that you're open to it. Some people be like, bitch, what the fuck? Are you a witch? I'm like, no, I mean, I'm not. I mean, I'm definitely spiritual. I'm in touch with my spiritual, me too. you know, yeah, there's just certain things that just keep me calm. And this is one of them. You see, Hi, bunny. But she, she's not gonna attack or anything. She's just a little ghetto. She's from the hood. So <laughs> I love she it. Little, give a tap, 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 yes, as she know, should. Kind of a thing. So you're allowed to like paint and everything here when you live here? Yeah, no, for sure. Um, if you want to come through, check out my kitchen. Yes, um, yeah, give me a little tour. It's and, big. Yeah, it's a little studio. And I did all this. this oh work right here. my gosh. <laughs> um. I love it. This this is a uh, bubble. She's smoking her pot. Um, he's getting contact. Um, I got <laughs> Miss Miss Catwoman. She has her Chanel bag. Yes. Don't look at my nails because they're not done. <laughs> um, she um Miss Penny Proud. She got a baby fat. I got a uh, gothic uh, pebbles. I got Wolverine. My mother, she was on and off of my life and like my siblings' lives. It was me, the youngest, my sister, and two older brothers. We all have different fathers, but we all lived in this one bedroom apartment with my aunt and my grandma. I guess you can call it a section eight apartment. I come from a, also a very religious family. Like my mother, she's a pastor. I grew up seeing like exorcisms and shit like in in the house like you know like where it's like they are everybody's like on my brother or like praying and like he's like spitting and like like stuff that wasn't normal he was young too but he he was older than me did you know at that time you're being sexually abused or did you just think that was your normal or in the very beginning i liked it you know and that's something that's very you know, real like i enjoyed it because it felt good i didn't know but then eventually as i got older you know like after 10 you know 11 whatever I, I started to like i was very uncomfortable there was times where it was even being done in front of my family you know it would just be like a blanket over me and that person and they wouldn't know like that i'm touching that person or i'm being like you know grab my hands to touch the person or whatever. I told my mother about the situation and what occurred and she didn't believe me. She thought that I was lying until that person came forth years later saying that it was true themselves, which is a very dysfunctional situation. And at that time when I ran away to him, I came out of the closet. I was watching some porn while he was gone from work and the whole computer shut down, like completely shut down, like just turned off. And I'm like, what the fuck? My father came back and I, you know, I, I, I notified him about the situation. I'm like, oh, I don't know what happened. It just shut off, whatever. So I thought that, you know, like he would never know. He was like, oh, he knew somebody in tech. They, I guess they had the IP address and they saw all the last websites that <laughs> Oh my god. It's beercock.com. It oh gay for all like just all kinds of like, you know gay shit. Yes. And I remember my father um coming back home one day. He took me to his room and he was like I need to talk to you and I had a feeling. I just had a feeling and I just started crying. I just started crying. I don't want to get emotional but um so I just started crying 
And I was just telling him, like, what happened? What happened? Because he was just, like, being really weird and really, like, aggressive. And he started pacing back and forth, pacing back and forth. And he was like, oh, he's like, I didn't want a girl. I didn't want a girl. And it's so crazy because I was technically presenting as a boy, but I felt like he knew deep down inside that I've always been a girl. I remember I just started just crying, crying. And I was just telling him, like, you know, this is who I am. This is what I am. Like, I can't help it. And I just, like, I don't know. I, I, I gained some courage at that moment to just kind of, like, defend myself. He just kind of walked away and was just like, you know what? I don't, I don't want this fag yet. I don't want this faggot and he, he literally said those words even to this day like i always feel like i have like kind of daddy issues a little bit mm -hmm. um i'm sorry no, no it's okay i hate that i get emotional about my father because it's like he don't give a fuck about me mm -hmm. you know what i mean it's been like it's been so many years and like he doesn't look for me i was in a group home i was living in a group home he didn't call to ask to see what i was doing or how i was doing um so I hate when I get emotional about it because it's like, get over it. I'm grown, right? No, no, but, but your, it's your it's your father. Yeah. I can, I can only imagine. I always dreamed like in my head I had this illusion that I was going to be with him and like, you know, like there was going to be peace in the family. And then I felt like he just didn't want me because of my, you know, my truth. Can I read this part? Like, yeah. Some people know what you're writing. Yeah, yeah. Create two mood boards for two music videos. Also possible, possible lyric videos. Also look for photographers for promo cover art photos. Um, and then you have like a list of so uh, labels that you want to follow yes. and engage with. Yes. Look for possible collaborators for music. This is so show face at parties. <laughs> and dance balls. This is amazing. <laughs> I love this. this you gotta be. You, you know, hello. I do. I do the same thing. Yeah. You have to clear up the fact that maybe more of a woman than the ones that you had. Plus some so dumb. You give up a drew for a clan to look tough, big stuff. Yeah, you smaller than my own hand. Head up. What's up? I'm not trying to make you feel bad, but I was all this beautiful before I laid down my honesty. Your eyes pierced my body as you acknowledged this pottery And when I gave you my number, you were winning the lottery And you really could have so much wealth that's inside of me But I'm trans, so I'm good for a quiet fuck Well, best of luck to you, to you, fuck boy To you, to you, to you, to you, fuck boy To you, insecure boy To you, do what they do and think how they think boy But boy, I won't be another toy up under your bed Oi, from my swag <laughs> to even my thick voice I know how to put a stop to the fetish and press void Couldn't let a filthy boy come up and try to destroy my reflection I, I have chills right now. You know, mm -hmm. I've stopped myself from really like pursuing things because I, I don't believe in myself or... And also I've been told by plenty of people that I wasn't good or I wouldn't ever be anything or I'm just pretty or I'm just this and that and a third and also being trans is hard. It sucks, but I'm not gonna let that bring me down. I'm still clearly like with a vision and I'm still putting my mouth, my money where my mouth is, you know. Everything that I do, I have to pay for studio time. I have to pay for vigils. I have to pay for all of that. All that's money. And, you know, I just lost my job. So you were saying that in the last week you've been debating whether or not you want to get back into sex work. Yes. You know, I went on, like, Indeed and all these, like, work platforms that you could find, like, regular day jobs or whatever. Yeah. And I just, all you see is just all this minimum wage work. So I'm just like... I can't, like, this isn't going to put food on the table. It's not going to pay my rent. It's not going to be, it's not going to help me invest in my dreams. Yeah. Nobody's funding me. Nobody's funding my dreams. Nobody's doing it for me. I'm trying to get some money. I'm trying to survive. I'm trying to fucking make a life for myself. I'm trying to get back in the studio. The unfortunate thing is that there's certain sites that, you know, you get a better clientele with more money, like a more wealthier clientele. Like sort of Eros thing. or something like that, mm -hmm. right? Exactly. But that's not the kind of site, because since I live here, I'm in, you know, in public housing, it just doesn't look... It, it would be different if it was a clean building, but, you know, my apartment's clean, but, uh, you know, they don't know that. Like, when they're, you know, walking into the building and they see the hallways and everything, and, you know, it's, it's disgusting sometimes, like, because, you know, even the door is just, like... It's open, like they keep on breaking it, so it's never really locked. So you have homeless people that come in here, you have people that do drugs, um, all kinds of stuff, you know, people, and they mess up the building, you know? So living in the projects, like, affects y your business as a sex worker because a lot of people that are maybe wanting to hire you don't want to come to the projects. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, if I want to, you know, like, 
the kind of money I'm seeking, the kind of money I think I'm worth, you know what I mean? Like, I for sure, you know, and I hate that I have to share my sexual energy, my body, you know, uh, my temple with somebody for, you know, less than what I deserve. I'm hesitant to bring up the sex change because it's not my business, but you've brought it up a couple of times, so I just, yeah, I want to talk about it if you want to talk about yeah. it. Yeah, you want to talk about my pussy? <laughs> 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 exactly. Okay, okay. <laughs> Not necessarily about like, the the surgery, of course, but like just about like your decision to do that and how that feels for you today. <laughs> well, I mean, it's it's hard to not talk about it without t- not talking about the surgery. No, because- you're free to talk about whatever you want to talk about. I just don't want, I don't want you to feel like I'm trying to be intrusive. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, no, it's it, it's okay. okay you're okay, so cute. Okay. I had my SRI surgery February 2014. I was the first girl to be um, approved by the state to cover my surgery. Wow. Um, so I had to prove to the law that it was medically necessary for me to undergo that surgery. I had a surgeon. I feel like she was careless. She seemed great. She seemed sweet. I was naive. I was in desperation of a change. And, you know, because I was conditioned, you know, to believe that my body was just not, not good enough. Or my body was not feminine. Or my body was disgusting because I had a fucking dick mm-hmm. between my legs, mm-hmm. you know. She did surgery and it was done and like... She kind of like, that was that. She told me that I didn't need electrolysis. And that's one thing that's like every surgeon who who, uh, performs a vaginal plasty requires a, you know, that to be done because if not, you can grow hair inside of you. And that's something that I've had to like struggle with where it's like, not like massive, like, you know, hair, but it would be like one hair and then it would just create like just complications for me. Dilating. You know, having to keep my vagina open, all of that was just, it was, it was torture. It was painful. It, was, it didn't feel good. Just these hard rods I had to keep open. And some of my vagina, um, the skin graft didn't take. So, like, it sounds funny, but, like, um, a part of my lip <laughs> was hanging and they had to cut it off. So then I was told that I had to go a size down in terms of, like, diameter, in terms of my dilation. And then I could move back up to, you know... And I did that, I went to the smallest dilator and, you know, for like a couple of days. And then it was so hard to just regain that debt back. And then I just started to close up and it was painful, like to the point of like, like I thought I was going to faint sometimes when I would put it inside me. It was just so painful. It didn't, it, it hurt so much. So eventually I gave up and I was depressed. It, it had me very depressed because I lost all this depth and I was just like, fuck it, I'm not dilating. I'm not doing this shit. Like, <laughs> I guess I'm going to be a human Barbie with a fucking non-working vagina. My vagina closed. And um, it's interesting that you're going through that mental health stuff because one would think that that would have solved a lot of your problems to get no. the sex change, to get the sex change, you know? Yeah. And it actually was the opposite. Yeah, it was It was totally um, the opposite. I was, you know, definitely, you know, um, happy at like, you know, I felt like, yeah, I saw a little difference. And I, I'm like, wow, like I'm one step closer to being the woman that, you know, I was made to be. A part of me was living in a delusion thinking that, you know, society was going to treat me differently. I thought that the world was going to just see me, you know, um, and allow me to coexist, you know, with the rest of them without alienating me. I've learned that trans people were always, regardless of how feminine you look, how much of a pussy you have, how deep it is, how, how not, how, you know, it, it's just, it's how we've seen it in this world. And honestly, I know this is a controversial thing to say, but I think that trans people, we're the, we're the most hated people or the most misunderstood people in the world. It, it made me feel less kind of of a woman in a way for a man like gay men don't date me they don't you know that's not like straight men men who like women you know they they that they they're attracted to me you know so those are the kind of men i entertain you know whatever and like my ex you know there was a lot of times where he was like you know oh please baby like you know you need to get that open like you know he want you know because we will have anal sex you know and it was great and all but you know he was well endowed and it, like for me to do that every day like he was a very sexual person he wanted to have sex a lot it was very performative i would do it for him but i didn't enjoy it like you know there was times where i'll cry like afterwards i was just frustrated because i'm like damn i'm all this woman and physically like i have this part but i can't even like utilize it now looking back if you had the chance to rewind time would you have still gotten surgery no <laughs> really yeah i think i would have not the reason why i want to get a second surgery is because i can't go back this you know the the path that i chose out of ignorance and you know i was a bit naive 
Um, but that's why I think it's important to be transparent about it because I think that a lot of girls, a lot of trans girls that do undergo that surgery, they kind of like pretend like, oh yeah, my pussy's this, it's so this and it's so that and and whatever. And it can be, but you also have to, you know, like be realistic. Like if you don't have the money to get all those surgeries, you have to be prepared to possibly have to undergo multiple surgeries in order to get the result that you want. Now we're gonna go meet your trans mom. Yes, it's gonna be so much fun. And she's in Queens, you said? Or, She's in Queens, yeah. And so, where? To, how do we get there? So we could take. I would say, um, but we could take train the, the F train to Twenty First Queens Bridge, and then catch a bus, and then. Cool. It's pretty. Yeah. I'm excited, yeah. And, I, and I'll pay for the whole travel, of course. And I'm no, so, you don't. Yes, of what? course. But Honey, I'm so excited. It's like Stop it's gonna it. be. It's gonna be an adventure yeah. for me. Bye, Mama. I'm nervous for this call. It's gonna. Yeah, we'll, we'll be good. Yeah. Okay. All right.